All right, guys, we're going to take a look at this Hamilton Murph. My buddy Rocky sent this over. Here's the hang tag. You can see the uh, suggested retail, $9.95. There's the model number. It'll be in the description as well if you want to look that up. That's a, one way to look at it. But pretty much if you type in Hamilton Murph anywhere on the web, you're going to find this watch or maybe even some other watches from the movie Interstellar. Um, I still haven't watched that movie, oddly enough. But uh, my buddy Rocky, uh, he runs through watches quite uh, often, like many of us do. And when this one was originally released, he really wanted to check it out. Um, I do also find it a little weird. This is the box it came in. I think they did a certain number of them where they came in a limited production box. And I think it's a more of a uh, uh, tribute to the movie where it has like the colored stripes i'm not sure like i said i haven't watched the movie so i think that has something to do with the movie the way that uh box is done if you guys want to put spoilers down in the comments go ahead at some point i will watch it but i it doesn't matter um so let's break it down let's talk about the size you can see obviously it's traditional hamilton really nice long lugs and everything like that but it's going to be really thin so you're looking at a true 42 millimeter watch Super long lug to lug at 52 mil, but you can see it's like really thin. And uh, the way Hamilton does their long lugs, it just it feels it wraps around your wrist really good. I'll give you a wrist shot here in a minute, but it's only 10.5 millimeter thick. That is including the domed sapphire crystal. 22 millimeter lug width. The leather strap that it is on does taper down to a 20 millimeter. You can see it has a signed buckle as well. One fixed keeper, one floating keeper. There's the back parts. You can see a nice display case back housing that H10 movement, no date, 80 hour power reserve. It is not decorated, but it does have the skeletonized uh, rotor there with a Hamilton engraving on there. Uh, very clean and classic looking. I'm not mad at all. So, um, let's take a look here. We got a really nice oversized crown, no crown guards, signed with an H. And then if we break it down further and take a closer look at the dial, let me see if I can get some of this dust off here. You can see it's all printed, Hamilton Khaki Auto, Swiss made, minute, seconds, track around the outside, Arabic numbers, but... Man, if I can get it close enough, let me see if I can get this for you guys. If you look at the seconds hand, and I am not going to be able to show this. Hmm. Hold on a second. Let me see. If, let me see if we can do this. If you look at the seconds hand, you can kind of see it there. There you go. You see those dashes on the seconds hand? I know this is not a super clear picture, but you can see those dashes on there. That's a Morse code. And it's Morse code for Eureka. And again, that has something to do with the movie. I don't know. You guys probably know. There's whatever. Throw up some spoilers. But the handset on this is so clean and crisp. I can do the two times here. But uh, it's not polished and it's kind of satiny or blasted almost but it is very clean and sharp there's no weird edges or marks or anything like that everything about this watch is just very clean and crisp and that's typically the case with Hamilton um, and that's why I think a lot of us like Hamilton because they do offer a really good value it's a really good watch Swiss made and it's just there's no fuss with them they're just they're good watches um you know, arguably, sometimes they're maybe boring or dull, maybe, to some of us. But I think when you're going to get a Hamilton, that's kind of the whole point. You want it to be understated. And this one definitely does that, um, but does it in a very classy way. And there's little hi hidden little uh, gems in there, like the Morse code on the seconds hand. Or just the way the, the color of the print and everything. But you can see on my seven and a quarter... This thing wears and feels great on wrist. So if you have, you know, anywhere from six and three quarter, maybe, but certainly seven inch wrist and up, this is going to be a champ. 
And I think you'll find yourself wearing this often. So big thanks to Rocky for lending this in. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I think that uh, about covers it as non-screw down crown. So that first position is going to give you a nice wind. And with this H10 movement with a no date, there is no ghost date. So they fixed that too. They addressed that, or not fixed it, but they addressed it. They did it proper. Uh, there was no shortcuts done there. So I'll see if I can give you a loom shot. I didn't pretest the loom. I suspect it's not going to be amazing. Um, if you look around, I think gray market or used, I think you can find these around 800-ish. I'm not 100% sure. Whatever you guys are finding, maybe chime in in the comments. But uh, they seem to be holding value pretty well. So and that's, that's a nice thing when you have a watch that is near $1,000. Also, this one I did notice too on the back there. It does say 10 bar water resist. So it's not a wimpy 5 bar. So this could be a really nice everyday watch, I think. Let me see if there's any loom. Oh, yeah. They loomed it out. It's actually pretty good. Not bad at all. I mean, it's no Seiko Diver or anything like that, guys. But um, I think Hamilton's maybe improving, especially because this one's got like a, a weird printing color. I'm kind of surprised to see it being that legible. And it's not dropping out right away, so I'm sure it'll last a few hours. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.